Hi guys, uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to create a bar graph like this in PySimple GUI. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a file called main.py um, and then we're going to import some different libraries. Um, well, the first one's obviously going to be import PySimple GUI uh, as SG and then we're also going to import um, a specific object from matplotlib, a, a library that's frequently used, especially in data science for plotting data. And we're going to import that as PLT. And then we're going to use a, another uh, library from uh, matplotlib. And this one actually allows us to work, well, it's basically the glue between the matplotlib library and um, PySimple GUI. And you may not know this, but PySimple GUI is actually build, built upon another library um, called tkinter. Um, it's basically a simplified version of tkinter. And um, what, this, what this line we're typing in right here does is it allows us to take plots from matplotlib and basically insert them into tkinter applications or PySimple GUI applications in this case. Um, we're going to have some data. We'll probably just have a few years, um, 1920. I'll go ahead and actually um, copy these from our demo application because that process isn't really that important. So I usually always make a demo application so I kind of know what I'm doing ahead of time. So we've got that. We've got um, a set of arrays for unemployment rate. And then we have a uh, set of, well, we have an array for a year and then we have a set of, we have a year or an array for unemployment rates that correspond to each year. So for example, 1920 is 9.8%, 1930 is 12%, and 1940 is 8%, and so on. And we're gonna go ahead and display that on our graph. Now the first thing we wanna do is we actually wanna create a function to display a graph using um, matplotlib. So we, have to, we need to do that before we actually um, create our PySimple GUI layout. So we're just going to say create bar graph, a year, unemployment rate, taking these two arrays as input. Um, so basically how this is going to work is this is going to end up being the y-axis and this is going to be the x-axis. So plt.figure, we're basically creating a figure um, on this plt object and we're going to say fig size uh, equals 10 being the width and seven. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to also, so basically with this PLT object right here, we're just adding attributes. So first we said we have a figure, and now, we, now we're going to say that we're going to create a bar chart. And we're gonna do that by writing plt.bar, and then year unemployment rate, so basically our y-axis, our data, sorry, our x-axis, and our y-axis, our data. Um, we're gonna make our bar chart red, like so. And let's see, color color equals red. And then we're also going to make the width five. Now this width can be can be different. Um, it can be pretty much whatever you want it to be. Right now we'll make it five. We'll play with that a little bit more later on. We want to give this uh, bar chart a title as well. So we're going to say plt title uh, unemployment rate versus year with a font size of fourteen. And then we're going to have, we're going to label the x-axis. We're going to say plt.xlabel is year um, with a font size of 14 again. 14. And then we're going to label our x-axis as well. It's going to be uh, plt.ylabel. And that's going to be unemployment rate. So x-axis label, y or at y-axis label, x-axis label right here. Um, all right, and yeah, again, font size 14. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to return from this an object, which basically corresponds to the figure that we just created, okay? Um, so GS, GS, GCF, um, plt.gcf, and this is going to basically, it's kind of, I, I believe the term for it would be, um, it, it's basically like a Python pattern that gives us, creates an object, so a factory. Um, and that's gonna give us a figure. Um, so basically, I know this is, 
we have we have a figure attribute, but this is basically going to take whatever we've created right here and turn it into a figure that we can then uh, draw on a, onto our PySimple GUI canvas. So let's go ahead and let's create the layout. Um, or actually, even before that, let's well, now we need to create the layout first. We'll say layout equals um, text. So we'll have some well, okay. So typical two D array um, filled with one D arrays for each row. So all right. So our first uh, line is going to be um, basically the uh, the title right here, which is just going to be bar graph, which is going to be sg.text. Bar graph. OK, that should be sg there, right there, not qg. And then next thing is going to be, um, so this is going to be our canvas element. And a canvas element is typically, is typically used in PySimple GUI um, just to draw stuff really like draw circles draw lines it's sort of like the paint fun the paint program if you will of um, a pie simple GUI we're gonna specify a size thousand by thousand um, I assume that means pixels uh, I've never actually figured this out just because it seems like every element has a different way of measuring size so we're gonna give that a key of canvas um, let's see what are we missing right here sg.canvas size equals Okay, that looks good, looks good. Okay, looks like we need a, another parentheses right here because this is all occurring within this canvas element right here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to just have an exit button. So you can't really see it that well down here, but there is actually an exit button down here. Um, now, I'm not really building a very complex application just so you, really, it's more so you really get an idea of how um, this type of application would work or how you could just create a bar graph. Um, but there are a variety of things you could do. You could have the user input data, and then you could have you could display this bar graph in another window. Um, in the future, we'll also have tutorials where you can actually change uh, these these bar graphs in real time, or you can see data changing in real time. So now that we've created the layout, what we want to do is we want to write the function that allows us to take uh, this figure that's been created in Matplotlib and actually basically paint it on this canvas element in PySimple GUI. So we're going to create a uh, function called def uh, draw figure on canvas. And then our input's gonna be our canvas. So it'll be a canvas element. Uh, basically, um, this, will happen, this will happen once we create a window, et cetera, but the input will be the canvas element, which will refer to this right here. Um, and then it'll be uh, the figure, which we've drawn right here. So actually, let me just go ahead and write out how this is gonna work. So how this is gonna work later on is we're gonna have draw figure on canvas, and then we're going to have window uh, dot window canvas. Well, we'll need to create a window for that as well. So we'd say window uh, equals sg dot window, and we're just going to call that PySimple GUI uh, bar graph. A little different from our demo application. Uh, we're going to include the layout, and we're going to say element justification equals true just to keep it equals center, actually, just to keep everything centered. Um, and now what we're going to do, we'll just put a pass right here. Um, now what we're going to do is we would just take, uh, we would use our draw figure on canvas function um, that we're creating right here. We'd have our canvas element as input. So we'd say uh, window, right, ca window, and then canvas um, using this key from right, sorry, from right up here. Um, and we actually, we're going to take that canvas and actually um, get an attribute off of it, which is TK canvas. So that stands for tkinter canvas. So basically getting the aspect of this canvas um, element that we've created right here uh, that corresponds to the TK, to, to, to the tkinter library and that can, that can be edited and drawn upon. And then we're going to say create bar graph um, here and then unemployment rate. So basically, this function that we're going to write right here needs to take in a ca the canvas element from right here. And then it also needs to take in um, the object created by the create bar graph function, which takes in the year and unemployment rate that was uh, specified up here. So let's go ahead and let's write this function. So we're going to say draw a figure on canvas. Um, we're going to say figure canvas 
bag aggregate equals this figure canvas uh, object right here. It's going to take in the figure we've input, which is, uh, well, actually, hmm. okay, well, it's going to take in this figure and then canvas. Okay. So really, actually, what this is taking in first is this is taking in the figure and then this is and and then the canvas. Um, orders a little switched around, but that's okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say figure canvas uh, ag dot draw, and this is really what's taking um, that figure in and drawing it on the canvas. Um, and then this right here just basically controls like how space is taken up. Um, between the canvas and the figure. So, you know, the canvas is this size right here, a thousand by thousand. And then we've kind of got a different size specified here, which is 10 by seven, which is just a different scale. And this one kind of controls how they, how one fills up the other. So how the bar chart fills up uh, the canvas that's been allocated. So we're gonna say get TK um, widget dot pack um, side equals top. So basically it's pushing everything up towards the top as much as possible. Um, you can't really see it right here, but uh, we're gonna have side equals top, fill both, and then expand if necessary, uh, expand equals one. I'm not gonna go too much into how this works. Um, if you really need something different, you can go ahead and, and uh, look at the documentation for this. But basically, I found that this gave us the most um, kind of optimal display here with the, um, with the, with the bar graph um, specified by the figure and the canvas kind of um, fitting into each other quite well. So now that we've done that, we're going to return uh, this variable right here, this figure canvas TK ag object. So return figure canvas uh, ag. And that's going to go right in here. Well, that's going to go right here, right? Um, so now that we've got this, actually, we don't really need to do that much more. Um, we just need to create our event loop, which is, which is pretty standard. We're not really going to do anything you haven't seen before if you've been following these tutorials. So we'll say while true event values uh, equals window dot read and if event equals sg dot win closed or event uh, equals exit uh, then break. And then we're going to do like uh, window.close. Um, so we're actually not really doing much in here just besides just starting the application. Um, we've already created, um, we've already basically created our canvas element right here. We've created our bar graph in this function and they've been put together right here and we've created the window right here by inserting the layout in there. So basically all the work has been done um, prior to the event loop and there's not really any events we're reacting to. So we just have a pretty simple event loop. Um, so let's go ahead and save that and let's kind of exit our demo application and let's go ahead and just run this. Bound to get some errors, but that's useful for you as well as me. Hmm, interesting. So we've got some massive error right here. Okay, looks like it's right here. Let's see what the problem might be. Let's see, we've got, uh, so it says right here, window equals SG. Did you forget to call, follow, call finalize? Okay, well, I guess, I didn't really see the purpose of this, but I guess in order for all of this to work, I need to call finalize um, right here. So I need to say finalize equals true, which I guess is just kind of finalizing the layout. Um, so let's go ahead and give that another try. I didn't realize that would result in such a massive error, but okay. All right, okay, cool. We've got this right here and it looks like pretty much the way we want it to be. Um, right here, you can see that it didn't really display um, all of the all of the years, but for example, for 1930, it's right between 1920 and 1940. Um, let's see if there is any way that we can actually make the bars thinner as well. So right now it's five. Let's make that like 0.5. Let's run that again. Well, let's make it 0.5 and let's make it blue. Okay, let's go ahead and see that. Okay, cool. So it kind of looks the same. Um, they're just a lot thinner. I think we should probably stick to five. That actually looks better. Okay. 
And it looks like we do have more space. We don't necessarily have more labels. Um, let's see if we can do something about that. We've got the years right here. They're just not being shown. So one way we could do that is we can say uh, plt dot x ticks, and then we can just uh, put in um, the uh, different years, all right? So we can just put in our year array right there, which just gets inputted right in here. So let's go ahead and let's uh, let's go ahead and let's run that. So as you can see right here, we've got our different years for each one of the bars. Now we can't really do that for y ticks because we just have raw data. What we could do is we could do pl.yTix. We'll just do that. All right. And that actually is a bit strange. <laughs> so that really just shows right up here. Um, and right here we have like kind of a space right there. So actually, if you did this, it would probably make a bit more sense. So let's do that. Now, I'm not really going to do this, but if I really just wanted to make this more granular, then I'd have to go not from right here. I'd have to go from here all the way um, down to right here. So 0, 0 0.5, et cetera. So that's how we can actually change the ticks or the labels on this side. Um, I tried to initially put in the array right here, but it didn't really work. It didn't really automatically create uh, labels for me. Um, what should have happened is that we put in the data as an additional input right here, like unemployment rate. Um, and then once we did that, we'd kind of have some labels that correspond to it. But anyways, this works for us. Um, so that's also how you create uh, labels on the x-axis and the y-axis. Anyways, I hope that was of value to you. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, have a nice day.